maybe you could share key takeaways for yourself from this conference. For me, it's, it's amazing how many people came, how many professionals, the passionate professionals who are here who are willing to speak, discuss and know participate in the local capital markets and I remember when we started the fund when we started the idea of the fund like five years ago there was nothing here basically I mean there was no debt capital markets for example more or less at least in Lithuania and now we have so many passionate professionals who are working here so it's really amazing. For you uh, Baltic capital markets uh, are part of the global or say European capital markets or still somewhere on their own? I think uh, they are still on their own because we still have some structural issues uh, which will be solved in time, but we still need time. We are still developing, we are still growing. So I think that, you know, in 10, maybe five years time, I'm not sure, but in time we will become part of European markets, but we still have to wait for that. There is a um, thought that we need uh, less regulation, but more help from, uh, from the regulators. Would you agree or not? Find me an investment banker who wouldn't agree on this. I mean, this is natural, but, but uh, it really depends on regulation. For me, I mean, I, I think that regulation in general needs to be there and regulation, uh, you know, keeps uh, us uh, more stable in a sense that we can, you know, we can know that things will still be around tomorrow. For example, crypto is unregulated and now it's wild, wild west. And it's really hard for institutionals to participate in such a market. On the other hand, too much regulation also kills the market. So you have to find this sweet spot. And I'm not sure. I mean, currently, I think some parts of market are overregulated, some parts are underregulated, and some parts are very well regulated. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a pro process, I guess. Uh, so logical next question. Any advice to the regulator? I always tend to advise the regulator to not think that retail investors are stupid. Because if you look at Mifid 2, for example, as a regulation, it really, you know, imposes this that retail investors are stupid, they cannot make their own decisions, you know, professionals should always help them. And that is not true. You know, retail people are smart people. They simply do not have that much money, but they're still smart, they understand things. So, you know, please stop, you know, treating them as, you know, someone incapable of taking care of themselves. Do you fear that we will face a similar exodus of investors from the Baltic markets, as we saw in uh, 2008, after the global financial crisis? Structure fun fundamentally markets are very much different and uh, fundamentally, the countries are very much different uh, if you compare them to what they used to be 15 or even 20 years ago. So I do not think, and also we've seen some capital fleeing Baltic markets. You know, that, that was uh, March, April, you know, Scandies and uh, people from Germany mainly, they uh, retracted their investments from here. So that did happen, but if you look now, I mean, six, seven months, uh, past that, there, there is no capital flight, like, you know, there is no big, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure how to, uh, there is nothing happening, basically, <laughs> that's my, you know, uh, so everything is fine and I do not see any reasons why, you know, the station should deteriorate uh, much in the, you know, upcoming future. Market thoughts. Um, best industry to hold in your portfolio next year? Well, uh, I'm really bullish on bonds <laughs> as, as I manage a bond fund, you know. But I think, you know, if we speak to retail investor, you know, I always say just, you know, get a diversified portfolio in stocks and forget about it. That's, you know, my, always my main and single advice. If you're a professional, it really depends on your mandate and how you you're, you have to do stuff. So, you know, there is no, I guess, no best asset class because mandates differ. But for retail investors, simply buy S&P 500, forget it. That's it. That's, that's all I can say. Uh, for the next year, S&P 500 will outperform the Nasdaq Baltic? Actually, I think not. If, if the station doesn't deteriorate economically here uh, much more than invest, I think local markets should outperform because of their size, because they are still small and we have quite a lot of cash in the system, which will be put somewhere. And I think that, you know, part of that money will go to local markets and, you know, it's easier to grow, grow from smaller size. So that's it. What is the fair price of Air Baltic five-year credit default swap? Uh, zero.
I mean, if your government don't buy them out, uh, I will lose faith in your country uh, as <laughs> as is because, look, there are only 200 mils of bonds. So, and you built an airport, an airline around that. So if you default on 200 mils, your CDSs on your government bonds will skyrocket because you have that, you know, so it's, 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 it would be really, <laughs> not in your country's you know, best interest to default on those. Possible next black swan for the Baltic markets, if there are any left? I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I do not truly appreciate the term black swan. I, I'm, I'm a hater of NASA Talib, so but that's all another story. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I mean, well, many things can happen. You know, I've, we've seen war, we've seen pandemia. We, I mean, we might face some aliens, I hope. I mean, that would be, at least that would be interesting for, for a change. But I don't know. I mean, but, you know, things are happening. They always happen. So just, you know, get on with it. <laughs> so. Which bonds would you be safer with? The Lithuanian government bonds or Italian government bonds? Uh, Lithuanian. <laughs> so residential real estate were Riga, Tallinn, Vilnius, Jurmala, Palanga, Bern. Uh, and tips. <laughs> yeah, South of France is better for me. <laughs>